Good morning, everyone. This is Ryan with your Friday, June 8th morning market commentary. Uh, we'll have to start off in the grains and once again mention because it is summer, we need to be focusing most of our attention on the weather maps. It looks like overnight trade uh, is anticipating another round of day session selling, but the overnight maps did get drier on the 6 to 10 day outlook. So we'll have to see if that makes an impact after 8.30 if the day session uh, wants to put a little bit of support into the market with a actually significantly drier 6 to 10 day map for the Midwest. Uh, it is Friday, so we should expect a little bit of a more limited reaction to the weather maps. Typically, during the summer, uh, trade will react to Friday weather maps the least and Sunday night, Monday maps the most. So, uh, two things. We'll see how much trade wants to react to the drier map here this morning on a Friday. And more importantly, are those maps still drier when we, when we return to trade Sunday night? Uh, lately, the corn did take out a pretty important uh, technical support level. In fact... At this time, July is left. Only contract lows is next support at 362. Uh, that's quite a ways down there yet, but on the technical side of things, that's really the last number and the only the next number we have to look at. At 362 in July is the number we should keep in mind. Uh, overnight, the beans did a little bit worse to the charts than the corn did. It took out the following its following support, which was the 2018 low set back in January. So that leaves next support at 9.52 for the July beans, and following that is contract lows of 9.35. Uh, still, we're not hearing any breakthrough talk in the way of U.S.-China talk, so we'll have to see how that pans out over the weekend, if there's any new headlines to, to pay attention to there. And uh, if there are, we would expect, again, some pretty uh, active trades Sunday night based on weather maps and U.S.-China talk. Uh, over in wheat, there actually was an improvement in the weather maps on the 6 to 10 day outlook because what we actually did, the rains that were reduced for the Midwest in the 6 to 10, 10 day outlook were actually pushed farther southwest into Kansas. So we are seeing more rain for the wheat areas and also uh, uh, quite a bit of backing off of some of the heat in that 6 to 10 day outlook as well. So while the maps got a little bit more bullish for the corn and beans, they actually turned out a little bit more bearish for the wheat. So we'll see how that impacts the wheat trade here today. Over in cattle, Nebraska did see a 114 bid yesterday. Still haven't seen a trade yet, but a 114 bid is still $2 improvement over what we had just seen the day before. We'll see how much reaction that causes on trade. Now, again, trade could stay a little bit cautious in cattle because we have one more seasonal week of high slaughter next week. So while we have seen futures react to an improvement in cash talk this week and probably a yet again another higher cash trade, we do expect that futures will stay a little bit limited on the excitement, still having one more week of high slaughter to get through next week. Now we'll see next week, uh, we could see a larger reaction to the show list and a larger reaction to any positive news. Maybe by next week, trade will have a little bit more of an opinion that the light at the end of the tunnel is close enough that you can start pre-buying the cattle. So let's see what we get for cash trade. Again, that's a 114 bid. It implies maybe we'll even hear a 115 trade in Nebraska, and that's a significant improvement over last week's 109 and change average cash trade. Uh, so that's what we're looking at here on your Friday, June 8th market commentary. Uh, you can always call us here at 800-2-MARKET or visit us on the web at allendale-inc.com.